Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my day all gone. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean, all I mean, all I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We pop up first in line. Because y'all see us on the street and talk about, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep up the good work. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Under each and every video on YouTube, including this one right here in the description section below, there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link, follow all the instructions. You'll get all the exclusive content that you cannot find anywhere else. You're going to thank me later, and thank you for all the love and support. Wow. Hey, guys, we down here in Houston, Texas, a.k.a. H-Town, man. And I've run up on some, hey, man, some people that God has blessed me with. You know what? And we was going to say a prayer. Let's say a prayer now. God, thank you for bringing us, God, together. Um, I just want to say, man, you never know which way a blessing is going to come in, man. So, hey, man, bless us to have a great, great, great episode here. And also with Mighty Soul, Alfredo, and Mr. Maker, and ECEO. Thank you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, man. So, man, I just introduced to me, y'all. This is, that was the first introduction in prayer that we've ever done. <laughs> over 4,000 episodes, and that was the first one we started prayer. We usually end in prayer a yes. lot of time. We never start in prayer. Right. And I think that was live, man. So, we here with Mighty Soul and Alfredo, man. So, we're down here in Houston, Texas. We're running to some dope entrepreneurs, man. And we thought we wanted to put them on the show. So, what's going on? Hey, hello, E. Hello, Ms. Jamaica. <laughs> Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. And just, I am delighted to be here. I mean, just God does things in such an amazing way. There's a plan and a reason why you're going to run into the right people at the right time. And we're just thrilled about all the projects going on in H-Town. Come on we're now. We're teeing it up here. We're expanded at record speed and connecting with you guys. I am talking about Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Royal Sinesta <laughs> hey. in the heart of Galleria here in Houston, Texas. Just fantastic. Super excited. Let's get into it, man. I want to, I'm going to pass it over to you. So I want to know, so where were y'all born and raised? Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. This man right here, born in Michoacan, Mexico. Okay. South of Mexico. Okay. Born and born. Yes. And you? Yeah, it's, it's Nayarit, Mexico. In Mexico. In Mexico. Coast wow. of Mexico, yes. So how was it being raised in Mexico? And were you raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Yes, mom and dad. You know, I got the privilege and the honor to thank to God, thank to my father, thank to my mother. They gave me the opportunity. I came to America when I was 16 years of age. Wow, 16. And I see the big picture that God to to make it because, uh, you know, God gave me this big opportunity. And I put in my mind and my soul and my heart and my spirit, my most important, my vision, what I was going to be doing in this country. And I, and I became wow. really successful when I was 28. Is that what you always wanted to be as a child growing up? Yes, I always dream. I always want to have something in life. So I got this challenge, you know, long story. My father always give me money, always give me the opportunity. He said, okay, you better do something with your money. I want to teach you, but most important, you got to know what to do with the money. I want you to work for yourself. Don't work for nobody else. Oh, he taught you that at a young age. Yes, wow. How many siblings do you have? Three and three. I'm three? the youngest. You're the youngest. I'm the youngest, correct. So... Are you older siblings, did they follow, I won't say they follow in your footsteps, but did you follow in theirs? Did they also do the same thing? No, I'm the only one. They are really, really good in life. They did really good things in life, but I'm the only one. With my mindset of become, you know, better in life to be, uh, to be an entrepreneur, to be a, a simple for my, for my child. What did your father do? My father was on the three businesses. My father was in the south of Mexico, so this man was a farmer. Farmer was number one, and the second was collecting all the fish at this little town and going back to the big cities and resell. So this is how we became really successful right. in a little town in Mexico. So that's what that's why he put that in you because he was also an entrepreneur. So he Correct. put that in you from an early age. Correct. So um, and you? 
Marisol. Marisol. Well, both of my parents are entrepreneur. It's in the blood. <laughs> I was selling at age three. We owned wow. uh, in, in Puerto Vallarta a souvenir store, literally by the coast. So all the tourists come. My mom said, you would not let them go. Uh, they, they had to buy a keychain. They had to buy something, this cute little thing. Just like, hey, you like this? You like this t-shirt? Like, you would not let them go. So that's in our blood. And I've been very, very successful in multiple arenas. Uh, um, at 18, I started started my first business, six-figure business, was successful in that, in the beauty industry, then I transitioned to real estate, and at 22, I made my first 300 grand Yay. in one year at 22 years of age, wow. and had uh, six properties to my name by 26. Then I got an opportunity to get the foot in the space, into the money business, into the financial space, which um, I'm very, very honored to, you know, 16 years later, we're going strong, wow. bigger and better, you know, um, opportunities. So it's just been a great, amazing entrepreneurial journey. I could tell you I held a job maybe for a couple months. Other than that, it's been me working for myself, running a business. So Marisol, how, I want to I wanna, go, ahead, go ahead. How old were you when you came here to the United States? 18. Though? At 18. English is my second language. English is second language. But I'm hearing all of the great things that y'all have done, but I need. I know there were challenges. Absolutely. I know there, were, there was this encouragement. People discouraged you, or maybe you discouraged yourself because of the downfalls. I want to hear about some of those. Go Absolutely. ahead. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, it was a big challenge, you know, because it's always when you want to get from good to great, of course, it is a challenge. It is a big challenge if you want to accomplish something in life. I'll tell you, when I was going to college, I was going to, to college to graduate, and uh, I became with this gentleman, thank to this guy, give me the opportunity to go into real estate. So he said, okay, so the economy goes up, you got to sell. The economy goes down, you got to purchase. But you got to hold into the money because when the economy goes down, there is a lot of movement. There is a lot of opportunities. There is a lot of challenges. Number one, okay, money. A lot of people that go through these challenges, money is the number one issue. So I prepare myself, I tell you, I purchased my first house when I was $140,000 a house. Mm. And I'll challenge all the people that tell me, why are you purchasing this house? Right. Why are you getting this house when you get something bigger, something better? And I said, listen, this is all I can afford right now. Exactly. But I put in my mind and my soul, wait for me two years. Two years after I made $250,000 without paying a couple of games. 250000 out of my pocket, get the second, the third, the fourth, and I finished in the mansion in Larkin Valley, which is in Santa Cruz, California, by the ocean, $2.5 million. Mm. After the challenges, the sacrifices, but let me tell you, somebody needs to pay the sacrifice to be able to get what you want, or what you want, it will become a sacrifice for the rest of your life. Wow, and for you, Marisol, tell me about, break down an instance, something that happened, break it down for our viewers to see and understand and relate to something that you went through that helped you and Absol overcame. Absolutely. Let me tell you, the journey, it's constant learning. It, I am telling you. Um, I was doing phenomenally well, you know, in my very early 20s in the real estate arena. And um, what happens in these economies? There's shifts, there's changes, there's recessions, there's market corrections. Right. And literally you're at top of your game, you're doing well, you're earning money, you want to have multiple streams of income, you have multiple you know, rental properties, and all of a sudden economy changes. 2007, who remembers what happened in 2007? Yes. You know the, you know, the crisis, and guess what? All of a sudden, renters were not paying, renters were leaving, property values were below what you owed on the property. You're like, what am I gonna do? I mean, it was just tragic, you know, difficult. Some properties had to get short sold. I mean, it was just a hot mess at that point in time to the uh, point where you're like, what am I gonna do? I need to make money like yesterday. And it's hard to reinvent yourself because you know how to make a living and earn a living in a certain space. And literally, I had to literally get rid of everything, all my portfolio that I had at the time. And to the point where you're like going back to your parents' home mm. after being, talk about humbling experiences, yeah, yep, God. Yep. And I remember so clearly, literally, I'm a person of big face. I'm like, God, I take the lesson. Thank you. 
I am learning my lesson on this, but this will never, ever <laughs> happen to me again. Wow. Literally, wow. and you resolve. You make a decision. I am here. It is temporary, but this is not where I'm going to stay. And guess what? You fight back. That's an opportunity. How are you dealing with adversity when at that adversity kind of like everybody could be very happy when success is here, but when adversity, are you going to buckle up, get serious about getting better, Pulishing yourself and reinventing yourself. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to reinvent myself in a completely different arena. And guess what? Boom! Six figures again. Why? Because it's identity. When your identity is a certain level, you have increased it at that point. Even though challenges might come, guess what? You make it up all over again. And that's exactly what happened. And we built like a multi million dollar empire since then. Let's talk about like the conditioning of just building a multi-million dollar empire, like just to be able to understand that level of, of, of entrepreneurship, that level of wealth. How, how did you recondition your mind to be able to stay in that place? We know God is the reason you're in that place, but just redeveloping and understanding like where you're at mentally, where you're at spiritually to keep you grounded in that because of all the vice defects Absolutely. that you had growing up to where mother and father didn't have it on the level that you're dealing with it now. Yes. How did you recondition yourself? Well, let me tell you, very, very important, your associations. Where are you placing yourself? Are you with people that feel that they're a victim, that things always happen to them? Are you surrounding yourself with white people that literally they're victors? They are creating their future. They're creating you know, their, their destiny. They're pursuing and follow their dreams. And I could just tell you, uh, the associations, the mentorship, and the leadership that I was a part of as I was reinventing myself in that new career path uh, has been extremely instrumental. I mean, the whole organization, we talk about the core values, faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun, and in that particular order, like faith, it's a fundamental. If you're straight and you're good in that space, you go by faith, the doors will open you have to be faithful and consistent and keep at it because the doors will open for you and um i could tell you that um through that like you see examples of other people around you that have a beautiful marriage for 20 30 40 years guess what you might have been raised in a space where you did not see that going That's on right. you see a lot of divorce rate right but when you see people that are having an amazing they're strong in their faith. They're strong in their family with their children, with their spouses. You know, of many years, they have strong, like, businesses that are giving them that amazing lifestyle that, that you seek and want. Guess what? It inspires you to want to be in that position as well. And it guess what? It rises you. They say all the time, you know, you're the average of the five people that you hang out with. That's right. Right? You're the average. So are you putting yourself in that circle? Like, if you're in business. And you want your if you're the highest income earner in your group of five, you're in the wrong group. That's right. You mm -hmm. need to associate yourself with other people that will pull you up and does exactly what I have done, what we have done. And my mentor became his mentor and literally his wife, literally it's like multiple layers of mentorship at multiple different areas. Man, congratulations, yes, man. Thank you. Alfredo, like how old was you when you first made your first million dollars? Okay, my first million dollars, like I said, I was in real estate. When I when I put my mind on something, you know, long story short, I didn't know I have this gift. But God, thank God, give me this gift. When I put my mind on something, I just get that thing in my mind and I just walk with it. You know, the moment I get up, I think, okay, this is what I want. At the middle of the day, I said, okay, this is what I want. At the end of the day, I just pray, this is what I want. And something becomes so real and I attract what I put in my mind. Yeah. So I said, I put a challenge and I put a goal and I said, okay, before 30, I'm going to become a millionaire. Before 20? Before 30. Well, before 30. before 30. Yes, sir. At 28, I became a millionaire. At 28. Cash, cash million. I really like, it's not to have the cash in the bank. I always like to see the cash. But most important is about how I control my money. Most important is about what are you going to do with this money? What are you going to transfer with this money? Should I transfer the skills? Should I give the money away? But most important, if I want to go far, I want to work myself. But if I want to go you know, with team, I gotta challenge the team, I gotta help the team, I gotta pull my mind, I gotta transfer my skills to be able to see what I have done. So they do what I did. So that's how I put, you know, myself in that situation. And I said, 
Marisol, know, this is what uh, I'm going to do. I got a question. Go with that. I like the way how you said a cash millionaire because most millionaires that I know of, they're usually millionaires in assets and everything that they have. Um, why did you choose to become a cash millionaire instead of, you know, redepositing all of that into investments and so forth? Yes, I tell you why. Because thank to this gentleman, you know, he said when you become a millionaire, it's better to have the millions of dollars liquid, mm -hmm. liquid money. And I purchased a house during the actions. You know, the courthouse outside, you know, 2007, 2008, you know what happened. Yes. So I was prepared. So I was the Latino, I was young, and I was outside the courthouse, you know, in this action. And I raised my hand and I purchased a house, 250000 flipped the house, sold it for $800,000. Right. Cash. Right. Wow. So that's what I did. So. That was a blessing. That was God preparing you. That's correct. Because a lot of people are not in that situation because that's what i always thought i always thought that millionaires are always in assets because i've seen so many people i've never hardly seen people who have that million liquidated in in cash you know so i was always wondering what's the difference but how did COVID affect y'all financially COVID, you know i have another two companies in california and i tell you you know a lot of businesses that closed down right but you know what happened with a lot of siblings, a lot of families, a lot of kids, wives, spouses, you name it, they stay home. So I have this company, and this is the biggest bakery in South California, in Northern okay. California. So what happened when everybody stay home? Everybody wants, to, wants eat. to eat. Right, so that company, what they sold in one year, we serviced the company, they sold in three months, what they sold the entire year. Wow. So that, thank God, that company is doing really, really good, according to that, so the, uh, you know, the COVID affect and somehow, but in my business, it was a blessing mm. because we do that type of businesses in Northern California. But you have multiple businesses, so did COVID affect any of your businesses? Not really, you know, because that one is the main one that want to start it because I went to college for that. So I choose to do that because I put, I said, okay, if I go across country, you know, transportation, this is when I'm moving trucks, mm -hmm. right? That's what it is. So I grew up in the area. California, so that's what I did. But having that business right there, it was really, really good. But on the other side, the real estate, again, the real estate started growing because a lot of people, again, a lot of people devastated, a lot of people short money, a lot of people in that situation. So and I our, just come and purchase homes, you know, that way. In our financial agency, uh, we grew 34 and 36% two years back to back during COVID. We're wow. an essential industry. We're bringing solutions to the marketplace. There's millions of people retiring, exiting the workforce that they literally, how can I protect what I have and make sure I don't run out? Mm -hmm. Like the average retiree lost 23% of their portfolio during COVID with when we had that downturn. Right. So everybody needed like, what can I do? How can I protect these retirement exactly. assets? Because I'm two years away, three years away from retirement. That's devastating for somebody like that. So. We were busy working remote. We were an essential industry in the financial space and uh, they allowed us to stay open. So we just went from meeting face to face to meeting on Zoom. You know, at schools, everybody was having those Zoom meetings or Zoom classes. So everybody got familiar and comfortable doing business virtually like overnight through mm -hmm. COVID. So it was a blessing in disguise. Other industries that didn't pivot, mm -hmm. I should say other companies in the industry that didn't pivot, they had negative years. We grew by 34 and 3. Wow, 6%. that's awesome. So what's the name of your financial company? GFI, Global Financial Impact. Okay, and um, tell us about that company. What does that company offer to, to our viewers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Alfredo and I have been entrepreneurs all our life and in the financial space you could choose to focus in different spaces for us in our heart and our core is literally guiding the entrepreneur that small medium sized business owner that literally they are uh, literally too small for the big multi-billion dollar type of corporations, right. right? They get overseen, they left behind. Literally, there's not a lot of know-how that gets passed down to them because they don't have 
200, 2,000 employees. They might have 10. They might have 15. They right. might have 20. They might have five. It might be him and the wife and one employee type of thing, right? Well, guess what? That group literally is in the dark. So they're already not thinking like an employee. They already went and opened the business, but they need the how-to, right? And that's the type of information we bring to that consumer. How can we help you literally surround yourself by groups of professionals that can help you grow and scale your business? Do you have a strong accountant? Maybe you went from 200,000 in revenue a year to 800,000 in revenue a year, but you still have the same you know, bookkeeper mm, <laughs> the same wow. money that does your taxes, right? Uh, from three, five years ago, guess what? Your business grow. You need to have professionals that are growing with you, that are with you with where you're going, with Got where it. you want to go. Why? They're going to give you insight. How can you have more tax, you know, benefits? How can you have more write-offs? Most accountants, the average accountant will tell you in November, hey, you mm -hmm. need to literally go buy, an, if you're in transportation, go buy another truck. Go buy more equipment, right? Like, literally, Literally go spend so you can get a write-off when literally uh, professionals like us will teach you how can you reposition assets and have a write-off and you'll still have access to the money so when the next opportunity comes wow. you choose to grab and invest from there Do that's awesome. what I'm talking about so man I just want to say thank you guys man like I said we're gonna definitely be doing more work together and um, I just know that God didn't put us together for no reason. Um, you know, you. the word of God says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you should have love for someone but not be in debt, I believe. I believe that you should be able to be free. You know what I mean? So all the things that you guys represent is the things that I believe that can help people to be better, you know? So I just, I just want to say thank you guys. You know, um, how can people uh, reach out to you guys if they're trying to get help? Absolutely. Um, on Instagram, they could reach us at uh, Marisol, M A R Y S O L, Guisar, G U I Z A R C E O. That's an Instagram handle that you wow. guys can find us at. On behalf of you guys, we Man. appreciate you, E. We appreciate mm -hmm. you, Mr. Mr. Jamaica, for all the love and the opportunity. And also, awesome. uh, thank you guys, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you guys. It's appreciate been you. another Alfredo. Stop playing, man. Appreciate you, man. All the success. I wish you all the blessings, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.